Hey everyone, welcome to Singularity Beast 2 Build Log Part 18. At the end of the last video, I installed two MSI GTX 680 Lightning Editions. I installed them air cooled to get some test results for my upcoming review on these graphics cards. It's now 24 hours later, and I'm already removing the graphics cards to install the EK water blocks onto them that I showed you in the last part of the build log. And I'm going to take this opportunity to make some changes to the loop and also fix the staining problem. So I talked about the staining problem in part 16 and 17 of this build log. So make sure you check out those videos if you want to know exactly what's going on with the staining. But I'm going to use one of the products that I mentioned in part 17. So isopropyl alcohol vinegar or bleach. And actually I have, I've decided on isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to use a 50-50 mix of isopropyl alcohol to distilled water. And I'm only going to run it through the radiators. So I'm going to bypass all of the other components, which means I'm going to set up a temporary loop. I'm also going to use an external pump because as I've talked about previously, the radiators is where the staining resides. That's where the problem is coming from. I mean, if it was coming from anywhere else, you'd be able to see it because the rest of the components in this build are transparent. But anyway, hopefully this fix, fixes the staining problem for good. I will let you know how it goes. Okay, I've now set up the temporary loop and I'm filling it with the solution of 50-50 isopropyl alcohol to distilled water. You can see there's still some coolant in the loop and this is just because I can't drain all of the coolant from the lower radiator without tipping the build upside down. A little bit of coolant stays behind, not much. The pump I'm using is the EKDCP 2.2 and I'm using the reservoir that you can get for it. And because the res is so small and so low down in the build, I decided to use a T-line type config to fill it. Otherwise, when I switch the pump off, I'll get backflow into the res and it could overflow. The tubing is a combination of the existing tubing. So around the back of the build is all of the existing tubing. I haven't bothered to replace any of that. And around the, the front of the build, I'm using master clear, clear tubing. But anyway, I'm only running this through the three radiators, as I mentioned, and I'm going to run, I'm going to fill the loop with the isopropyl alcohol solution twice and I'm going to let it circulate for probably an hour each time. I'm then going to thoroughly flush the loop to make sure there is absolutely no isopropyl alcohol left behind. So I'll flush it something like five to 10 times with deionized water. It's now about four hours later and I've finished flushing the radiators. That all went smoothly, but I'm not going to know if it worked for about a week until I see the tubing start to stain again, or hopefully not stain again. But I've removed the graphics cards. I've finished draining and dismantling the loop, although there is still one piece of stained tubing around the back of the build that I need to remove, as you can see. And I've also started rebuilding the loop and making the changes that I had in mind. And as you can see, the changes I had in mind is just adding a whole lot more crystal link. Now what I still need to do to the system is continue draining and dismantling the loop. But before I do that, I'm going to move on to the graphics card water block installations. I'm looking forward to these installations because these graphics cards are non-reference. I'm looking forward to taking a look at the construction and all of the features. The GPU reactor, for example, which is an extra PCB that mounts onto the back of the graphics card cleans up the power, increases capacitance by 200%. There's some amazing features on this graphics card and you can see the back plate here. Take a look at how busy the back of the PCB is even though it is a whole lot bigger than the PCB of the stock GTX 680. Now, uh, non-reference water block insulation is not a good place to start for a beginner often because they're more complex but this one was fairly straightforward and easy although there is a couple of things you need to watch out for mainly surrounding the GPU reactor. You just need to be careful you don't bend the pins when you're reinstalling it and the cover is a little bit fiddly but you can see that every layer of this graphics card is just awesomely built you know the cooler is highly effective you'll see that in my temperature results 
When removing the unisink, you need to twist it from side to side to break the seal instead of lifting it straight up because that can damage the PCB of the graphics card. It can bend it. You can see the awesome military class components, the tantalum capacitors, the gold caps. The main area of this PCB that's, that's being built up is the power delivery. I'm now just cleaning off the thermal interface material and replacing it, laying down the thermal pads and I've installed the water block, turned the graphics card over, I'm putting all of the, the bolts and screws in that go underneath the, the back plate, now installing the back plate and bolting that on. After that the GPU reactor goes back on and then the cover. So there it is, the water blocks are installed and I'm just about to install the graphics cards back into the system. Now the installations went smoothly, there was no problems there except for a mistake that EK's made in their manual. Now in the manual, in the diagram, it says that the water block actually goes right up to the end of the PCB here and right back to here. And it, it actually includes four extra screws in the diagram and those screws are included with the water blocks but you're supposed to screw them into the water block you know because the water block is supposed to go right out to here these are the screws here so it turns out they don't screw into the water block because the water block's not that long so I had to use my own nuts and bolts so you can see the nuts just there they're M3 nuts and I have M3 Allen key bolts so those four, that one, two, three and four are mine as well as the nuts and then I've used EK's nylon washers that were included with the water block. But successful insulation, no problems there at all. It's still going to work perfectly and it would have worked fine without those four extra bolts. It's just that it wouldn't have been as strong because the back plate makes, you know, stiffens the PCB a lot, but only if the PCB is bolted to it. So as you can see, I've reinstalled the graphics cards and I've finished configuring the loop. Now, I'm actually out of time here. I've done a bit of a marathon with this build. I've been working all day. It's very late. So I don't have any time to show you the loop now. I'm going to wait until it's full, it's back up and running, and all of that. So I have the usual precautions in place that I've talked about a lot of times. The tissues where there could potentially be leaks and actually I've made massive changes to this loop and because there's a lot of Crystal Link in it, Crystal Link is very touchy with leaks. It, un it only needs to be on the slightest angle and you can get a leak so I'm going to be very very wary of leaks when filling the loop. So I'm doing a full leak test. I have the pumps running from the external power supply you can see it here and both pumps are connected up I'm all ready to go I have the coolant there the loop is almost completely empty there's a little bit of distilled water left in the bottom radiator but it's been well flushed, flushed out it's had the isopropyl alcohol through it so I think the stain problem should be gone let's get this thing filled so this is certainly a process I've been through many times with this build now. I've actually forgotten how many times I've filled and drained it now because there have been so many. And there will be many more times in the future also because even now I have changes in mind for this build. And I've had some comments, you know, people asking what is the point of this build basically, you know. People asking are you never happy with your builds? Why? Why am I always changing this system? Why is the build log going on forever? <laughs> and the answer is simple. The purpose of my videos, the reason I started my channel was to share information. And this build is basically just a tool for sharing information, for bringing you more videos. That's what this is all about. And only an enthusiast is going to understand why people will build systems like this. So. It's also about that, you know, for me, it's my passion, it's my life, so. Now, you've you probably noticed there was a bit of diluted coolant coming down from the top. 
That was just because, as I mentioned earlier in the video, when I drain or flush the loop, there's a little bit of fluid left behind in the lower radiator. And I flush the loop with deionized water. I use Mayhem's coolant concentrates, which I mix with deionized water anyway. So I just allow for a little bit of extra deionized water, which means I add a bit of extra coolant concentrate. The coolant I'm using here, for those of you who don't already know, is Mayhem's X1 UV Blue. So that's it, we have full circulation, no leaks, no problems there at all. I'm now going to run the leak test for probably half an hour, get a bit of the air out, and then I'm going to boot the system. Okay, the loop has actually been up and running again for three weeks now. The reason it's been so long is because I haven't had any time to come back to Singularity Beast 2 because I've been working on client builds. Client build 6, Dark Matter and client build 8. You can see I've changed the reservoir and I actually did this after I filled the loop. It's really easy to drain the res. All I need to do is open the drainage system, the bits power tap. The first thing it drains is the res. So basically I bring the coolant level down to the, the bottom of the res, but I don't actually need to get air into the loop to change the res in this particular loop. It's just the way it's set up, so it's really easy to do. But anyway, I've changed it from the, the bits power 150 to the 250, so it's almost double the size. And I really like the aesthetics, I, but aesthetics is not actually the only reason I changed it. But it fills in the blank spot, you know, even after I installed the hot swap bays, they filled in most of the blank spot, but there was still a fairly big blank spot above the the res. So that's filled in now, and this build is starting to look really balanced, which in a case lab's case, creating a balanced build is hard to do because it's hard to fill these cases because they're so massive. But Anyway, I'm, I'm really happy with the res. It shows off the coolant color nicely and the color of this coolant is just awesome. But the practical reason I installed it was because the coolant level in this build actually really fluctuates a lot. I think it's because of the dual pumps and also just because of the way this loop is configured. When I boot the system, the coolant level will drop about 50 millimeters and when I shut the system down, it will rise 50 millimeters again. And it, you know, goes up and down drastically when I'm filling the loop. I have some bad news. The isopropyl alcohol failed. Not completely. It did have an effect, but not a perfect result. You can see here the tubing, which is duraline, has stained, but only slightly, and it's been three weeks, remember. So it stained about as much as it would have before I used the isopropyl alcohol after only 24 hours. So that is, you know, a, a pretty good result. It has had a big effect. Now I'm going to continue to experiment with the stain removal. I'm going to try isopropyl alcohol again, but this time I'm either going to use a more potent mixture or I'm just going to run it in the loop for longer. But, you know, as I've mentioned previously, all I've had to do to remove staining in the past is flush out my loop with distilled water. So this is not something I've had to do before, which is, you know, why I'm still refining the process. And I want to put some good information out there about stain removal. I'm not actually going to continue to experiment in this build though. I'm going to do it in my test bed. There will be future videos coming up on the subject. The solution to the to fixing the staining problem in this build is going to be constructing the entire loop from hard tubing. And that's something you're going to see coming up as well. Now, I was going to go around and cover all of the fittings that I've used in the new Crystal Link configs because it's something I always get a lot of questions about, but I think it's going to bore a lot of people. It takes a long time to cover all of the fittings. So You've had a good look around at this point and you can see what the fittings are anyway. I will just cover some new fittings that I've used. I've completely changed the drainage system and all I've actually done to change it is I've swapped the five-way multi F block for a Q fitting. It's just cleaned things up a bit. It's a more elegant way of doing things. Bits Power has such a massive range of fittings that there's a lot of different ways of, of doing the same thing because there's, you know, there's a number of different fittings you can use to do the same thing. Another new fitting that I've used is this 
this dual multi-link fitting and it allows you to go past the length limit of Crystal Link because Crystal Link has a length limit. It's designed for multi-GPU water cooling configs. Five PCIe slots on your motherboard is the longest Crystal Link. That's what it's designed for. And if you want to go past that, you can use this fitting. It has four O-rings inside of it and you can push Crystal Link into both sides. It doesn't have a thread or anything like that. It's designed to be used, you know, suspended like this. You might be worried about sag, but the Crystal Link fits so tightly inside of it that you could put 10 of these in a row and sag still wouldn't be a problem. So some of you probably remember what I said about the new EKFC Link and how it's going to have a negative impact on aesthetics if you still want to go for Crystal Link, for example, because EK are obviously pushing people towards the EKFC bridge. But you can see here, I've used Crystal Link and really it looks amazing. I have had to use four extra 90 degree fittings, but I don't think it looks too bad at all. As I always say, the more Bits Power Black Sparkle fittings and Crystal Link, the better. And these graphics cards just fit into this build perfectly with the, the color scheme and the theme. They're going to go really well with, with what I'm getting airbrushed onto the side panel. The water blocks look amazing, you know, the black and the silver. It obviously goes with the color scheme of this build and then the black backplates and the lighting is just spot on. The GPU reactors have a nice blue glow and then there's all of the, the power phase lighting on the back of the graphics card. And actually I was talking about adding LED strips around the build. I was either going to use white, blue or UV lighting, but that's not going to be necessary. I'm satisfied with the lighting the way it is. It's really subtle. The six LEDs that I've put in the CPU and memory water blocks, they're white ModSmart 3mm LEDs. And the lighting on the back of the graphics cards is going to be enough in this build. Anyway, that sums up this part of the build log. In the next few parts of the build log, I'm going to do the wiring. I'm sleeving everything in million dollar PC. I have a whole bunch of custom cables to make up and I'm going to integrate some wiring guides and also do some separate ones. So on sleeving and making up custom cables, all of that. As well as that, I'm going to change around the hard drive configuration. I'm going to add some more hard drives. I'm also going to swap the single SSD in this build for two SSDs in RAID 0. I'm also going to make the changes to the loop that I've mentioned. So finish constructing this loop from hard tubing. I also need to organize the airbrushing of the side panel and I'm going to do some overclocking and then go through my final test results. That sums up this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like and favorite if you want to see more.